Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Ford, and we are here for another poetry discussion, a poetry discussion which will appear in two separate playlists here on the channel. Number one, obviously, being the poetry discussion playlist, but number two being the Charles Bukowski playlist. Uh, the poetry discussion playlist nearing 300 titles, the Charles Bukowski playlist nearing 100. This poem, kind of a sad one. Carson McCullers, as penned by Bukowski. She died of alcoholism wrapped in a blanket on a deck chair on an ocean steamer. All her books of terrified loneliness. All her books about the cruelty of loveless love were all that was left of her. As the strolling vacationer discovered her body, notified the captain, and she was quickly dispatched to somewhere else on the ship as everything continued just as she had written it. So, Carson McCullers was a novelist, short story writer, poet, essayist, and playwright. If there was something to write, she wrote it. She wrote a novel called The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. So this is largely a non-fiction poem, right? We are simply we are simply commenting on the irony of her having a death that is lonesome and awkward, much like the things that she wrote about, much like the way, from what I understand, she led her life. Now, I was not able to find that she died on an ocean steamliner. Didn't look too much into it. I don't know if that is a fabricated portion of this story from Bukowski. I, it doesn't particularly matter, I don't think. It does in the fact that... What a way to go, right? On vacation, on, a, on an ocean steamer, all of a sudden, your life is gone. But this... This poem and the nature of the subject's passing paired with the nature of the subject's life. Pardon me for the light being out. Uh, it's 101 degrees and I just did seven miles in it and making two videos afterwards after a night of work uphill both ways, don't you know, in the snow. Uh, but I am past hours now, so I, I, I have to have it darker. I apologize. I know it looks like garbage, but this, the nature of the death here and the nature of this poem in general, the irony of a lonesome and uh, what were the words that Bukowski uses down here? Cruelty of loveless love, terrified loneliness. Terrified loneliness. I mean, that is just... That's a heartbreaker there, right? These words, the irony of our subject passing in the same way that she wrote about, it raises the question, why do we read? Why do we write? These things are almost inextricably linked. I don't know too many people who consider themselves reader that have not at least dabbled in creating um, literature in writing, in poetry at least, or short stories. Almost everyone has half a written novel stowed away in the top drawer of their dresser, or at least they used to. I don't know. I don't know. I hate to sound too curmudgeonly for the second time in this video already, but I don't know about the younger generation. I don't think that they have a connection to words, written words, in the way that, that we did. They have other avenues of creation, social media, video. We simply didn't have video when I was younger, right? You, you didn't have video. You couldn't make a video. Everything was ephemeral. Everything was uh, here one day, gone the next. Everything was in the moment as it were. So I think the allure of those, those medium, the allure of that type of creation is very strong. There's a strong pull to it. But why do we read? Why do we write? Reading and writing, they're not living the life. They're not doing the thing. 
They're not particularly even relaxing. Some people read to fall asleep, but that's a different type of reading. Really, what you're doing is pacifying the mind and occupying your eyes. If, if you are using、uh, reading as a means to fall asleep, and what it will do, it'll ruin your readerhood because you will condition yourself,、uh, even if it's noon, you'll start reading and pass out. I know, I was there, I did it to myself. But for those of us, to those of us for whom literature, writing, reading is something that we just do, number one, terrified loneliness seems to be a part of the game. Seems to be just kind of one of the rules. You know, I'm, I'm going to be an、uh, old curmudgeon, a crotchety old man for the third time in this video and share a story about my youth. And it has to do with. So I started a podcast on the channel recently where I ask a question about literature and then sort of try to muse on it for a half an hour or so. This past week was Why Do We Read? And I started to tell the story about when I was younger. And this thing, reading and writing, these things, I think they're the same thing, was just in me. I, I couldn't not do it. I had to do it. And there was one point in time where,、um, look, guys, well, I, was, I was down on my luck. I used to eat ranch sandwiches. And I don't mean like, well, what tastes good with ranch? You have some corned beef, you put a little pepper on there, slap it between two pieces of bread, and、uh, smother it in ranch dressing. No, I used to eat ranch dressing in between two slices of bread. And it wasn't even a good ranch dressing, it was the ranch dressing that, that tastes tart, right? It was that type of ranch dressing. And at the time, I was working three jobs in order to pay rent, pay my car note,、um, all of these things. I was trying to go to school as well. Ended up having to quit school, but still pay off 66% of that semester, whether you quit the classes or not. And I still had to do it. I had this one bedroom apartment. And I didn't really use the heat in the winter. I didn't really use the air conditioning in the summer. If it was 88 degrees outside, it was 88 degrees in my apartment. And the weird thing, absolutely strange thing about that, if you've never lived under those circumstances, you take a shower and you just don't stop sweating. It's weird. I, I don't know what that mechanism is, but you go to work. Sweated through your clothes, which is very embarrassing. In the winter, you sleep in your coat, right? Working three jobs, struggling through that, quit school, but I still had to do this thing. I had this little card table in the corner of my room, and I had this、uh, desk lamp and a notebook. And I had to do it. I couldn't not do it. Why? It's not living the life. It's not doing the thing. It's not particularly relaxing. It, and I, don't, I, I do not mean why do I do it? Why did I still feel that compulsion? I, that is not unique to me. Even Christopher Hitchens, who, to the best of my knowledge, never wrote a poem or a word of fiction in his life, was a polemicist, confessed to struggling with it. He said, I don't write because I want to, I, I write because I feel like I have to. And here we have this, the story of this woman, Carson McCullers, a writer. Finally, took a vacation and died in the manner that she wrote about people. 
Is that sad? Is it? Is it fitting? Is it? Is it possibly bittersweet? Is there a bittersweetness here? This individual basically calling her shot her entire life? The, the big bambino pointing to deep right field and then hitting that home run? Is there something to Bukowski picking out the irony of this event knowing full well he would die in a not pretty manner as he wrote in a not pretty manner? Is this just one of these events where the universe works itself out all too perfectly? That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you enjoy or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does me a whole lot of good on the channel as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more because I have poetry every Monday and there are lots more videos on the channel. I talk about short stories, novel read-alongs, writer's quotes, all sorts of stuff. And I hope to have you back for the next one.